let's get you up and running with Adobe Animate super quick. When you first launch the program, you're gonna be welcomed with a new document dialogue. Let's just go ahead and choose a video preset 1920 by 1080 and say create. Now I'm gonna hover over this scene window here and hit command minus to zoom out a little bit. Now, right down here at the timeline, this is where all the action is gonna happen. This is where we create new layers and do all of our artwork and animation. This menu bar right here, the biggest one of all to understand is this menu here in terms of inserting keyframe, a blank keyframe, or simply a frame. This icon here refers to the onion skinning. This icon here relates to editing multiple frames at once. This right here is our looping animation button for playback. And here is a play forward and backward. Now there's really two main ways to create artwork here. We can use simple shapes, things like an oval or a square or a polygon or we can come in here and use a classic brush and use the brush tool. Now I'm on a Cintiq, so I can go ahead and start drawing on this first layer. And we'll see that when I actually did that drawing, it added it to this layer. So if I hit Command Z, you'll see this is what a blank layer looks like right here. When I add some artwork to it, we see it filled in. Now it's an actually filled in keyframe. Now let's do our first animation exercise to really drive home how this works. Let's go ahead and do a simple little drawing of a ball and we'll see it filled in right there. Now, if I want to actually go forward and start creating more frames, I'm gonna come back to this menu here. Now the two main options are create keyframe or create a blank keyframe. If I want to create a keyframe, it's actually going to duplicate the art on the first frame and copy it to the second frame. So now I have two frames and if I hit V for the selection tool, select all of my vectors and hit Q, I'll bring up this transform tool and I can start moving it over a little bit. Now I actually have an animation going. So that's really the first way to go about it. The second way is to do a more traditional animation and insert a blank keyframe. I'm gonna to wanna to turn on onion skin so I can see the previous drawings. And down here, I'm gonna see this blue and green brackets. This refers to the area that is actually being shown in the onion skin. So I could come in here and hit B to bring up my brush tool and come back and do a second drawing of a little ball. Now, if I hit enter, we're gonna see, I actually have an animation going now. I can turn off onion skinning and turn on looping and then actually define the area of the looping and we'll see now I'm doing a traditional animation as well. So those are really the two key ways to create more animation. So let's go ahead and do a straight ahead animation. So I'm gonna turn off looping. I'm gonna command Z that. I'm gonna work with blank keyframes and go ahead and do and animation. So I'm gonna turn on onion skinning and let's go ahead and get some more frames in here. So I do the drawing, I select the insert blank keyframe command, and now I could start to space these out a little bit more, use my knowledge of animation principles to start speeding this thing up. I'll just keep creating, nope, a little further, come back, add a new blank keyframe. Now I'm gonna start actually turning this into a little bit more of a pill shape as this thing starts to pick up speed in terms of my spacing. And we'll see the onion skinning preview area actually moves with the cursor as well. Now I'm going to hit insert blank keyframe again, and now I'm gonna really add a little bit of a smear frame in here. I'm gonna insert another blank keyframe, zoom out on my scene a little bit, add even another further spaced out. And you can always take a few attempts at your drawing. Insert another blank keyframe. And we'll start to slow this down on the other end. We're just doing an ease in, ease out. We'll start to close down the space here. Just keep inserting new blank keyframes. And these are gonna start to get closer together until we slow this thing all the way down. So this is actually a really useful little animation exercise. I'm gonna start overlapping these drawings until we come to a complete stop. Come forward just a bit more. And now perhaps one final drawing that is just slightly past the previous drawing. So I'm gonna turn off onion skinnings. I'm gonna turn on looping. And again, I need to define the area that I want to loop. So I'm just gonna grab those handles up top and now take a look at my animation. Now I know I'm working at 12 frames per second because that's here. Now that's something we can set up when we set up our document. Originally, I like working on two, so 12 frames per second is really useful. So we have our first animation here, but let's say we made these drawings just a little bit small and I wanna be able to edit all of the animation that I just did here. That's where we're going to turn off looping and come to this menu here, edit multiple frames. Now, if we turn it on, 
we're going to see a default selected range, but actually we can also just say all frames. And now I'm going to see every single drawing I did across every frame. If I hit V to bring up a selection tool, grab everything, hit Q to come back to that transform tool. Now I can hold down shift like I would in any Adobe software and actually translate all of these drawings. So let's make it a little bigger to each corner. We can actually turn it at 45 degrees. I'll come back, turn off, edit all frames and hit play. So now we just changed our entire animation. And the great news is, is that each of these drawings are actually vector based, right? These things will scale all the way up. Now we'll see the, you know, the quality of the drawing, but these aren't pixels, right? So we can scale, we can bring that closer in uh, and still that's gonna work just fine. Now, let's say we like this rough animation and we wanna go ahead and do a final. I can go ahead and create a new layer. And on this layer, I can control click and refer to it as a guide. So now it's going to be there, but I won't be able to mess with it or affect it. And that's actually useful. Hit B to go back to my brush tool. And over here on the right, we have all these brush settings. So we were working at one. We could turn that up a little bit and see kind of what we're working with there. Now I could go back over the top and draw better looking drawings over top of my rough animation. And this is really the process of how that works. Now, the next important thing to understand here is that when we use the brush tool to draw an outline, we still have this stroked shape. So I'm actually turn off the underdrawing here. I'm just gonna insert a keyframe. So I save this drawing here. So the shortcut you really need to understand is B for the brush tool to create a shape and then K for the fill tool to actually fill in a shape. So now I could actually create some more filled in vectors. The biggest thing about this fill tool is we just have to make sure that our drawing is totally closed. If you do a drawing like this and you hit K, it's simply not going to work. If I do a drawing that's completely closed off and I hit K, it's gonna fill in just fine. Now to add a camera to a scene, we simply turn it on, right? And now we can scale up we can reframe, and basically because we're working in vectors, that works just fine. We can also animate the camera. So if I have my camera selected and I come up to this insert menu, I'll say create classic tween. And now that's actually changed the color here. So if I come all the way to the end, and I actually, let's say, zoom out a bit, it's gonna go ahead and lay a keyframe. And so now the camera is actually being animated. So I can come to this very first frame and zoom in to where this is actually off screen. And then at the very end, let's say we zoom in, so it's actually sitting right about here, and then we hit play, and we can kind of see that animation. So even with just our basic vectors, we can really get some more use out of it by turning on the camera for the scene. So there's lots of little fun exercises you can do to improve your animation skills, but Adobe Animate itself is actually pretty simple. Doing something like a flame and a spark is a really fun animation. It makes you really think about all the in-between frames here where the fire is just getting started, where we kind of drag it through and have all these sparks flying off and then eventually actually turning into a flame. We can also just, like we said, use simple shapes like a circle with their opacity turned down and then go in and actually animate that frame by frame as well. We can create immersive scenes that have camera moves going on, so that's really useful as well. Or a little animation and painting like this where you're just doing kind of a flame test is also a good place to start as well. But really the absolute foundation is kind of doing stuff like this. If you're totally new, just get in there, do a little, do a little circle drawing, do some ease in, ease outs, do some bounces, do some jumping and just really get comfortable with this tool set because it can really add so much to the rest of your production pipeline. Now from Adobe Animate, we have a couple of options to actually get a usable image out of this. We can actually just export right from here. You can export to a GIF or some kind of compressed movie file. The other thing we can do is actually just make sure that we've saved this file to our local machine and go ahead and jump over into Adobe After Effects and just import that scene into Adobe After Effects. After Effects can take the work that you've done in Adobe Animate, bring it over as a folder and a pre-comp. So we're actually ready to go and we can see right here, all the layers are good to go. Now, the one note here is we'll see, I had a multiply layer for one of my layer modes turned on inside of Animate and here that layer mode didn't come over. However, if I actually switch this layer mode back to multiply, we're gonna see that I basically end up with the exact same looking animation that I had. I also have this camera move and that is baked in to these actual image sequences, these layers that we have here 
in Adobe After Effects. So if I hit Control-0, we can go ahead and preview this, and we're right back into Adobe After Effects with everything that we just did inside of Adobe Animate. So if you're an After Effects user, this is probably what you're going to end up doing if you create little elements in Adobe Animate and bring them over into After Effects for finishing. So there is your quick start guide to Adobe Animate. It's really simple. It's all about what's going on in the scene and in the timeline, understanding onion skinning and creating new frames. And then everything else is really just illustration and animation principles. So that's really important to focus on. We have a big mega course from, you know, world-class animator Enrique Barone going much deeper on how to really get the most out of Adobe Animate and sell animation generally. But if you wanna start tinkering around, don't be intimidated by it. It's really, really simple. Just get in there, start drawing, doing your tests. And I think you're gonna find a really natural workflow of getting those vector animations over into Adobe After Effects. So thanks for watching.